All right, so I know I didn't have you uh, pull out the book, but we'll be okay. We should be able to just take some notes based on some of the stuff that uh, key opponents I say. say um, when you get this, you could fill it in if you want to later on. Um, we're actually going to go through 9.1 and 9.2. Hopefully get through 9.2 in this video also. Um, like I said, we're trying to make up some time here. So for 9.1, just some basic things that we're going to really talk about um, are these vocab words up here, making sure we kind of understand it, the uh, inverse of a function and invertible function. All right, we've already talked a little bit about an inverse of a function. Hopefully you've heard that before. Um, if you remember, when you, when you do an inverse of a function, you are just switching uh, the x and y. And so uh, some of the things that they, they show you in this is um, we're going to talk about x to the first power, second, third, fourth, and fifth, uh, and even sixth in this. So they're talking about how the ways that you can transform uh, this to its inverse. Um, so when you, so again, basically you just switch the X and the Y. So if I had gave you a, a If I gave you a x and y chart, and I said this is a function, and I gave you one, two, three, four, five, six, you literally the inverse function um, would be this is the inverse would be uh, two, four, six, and one, three, five. You just switch the x and the y, and that has to do with the same thing. So, but if we go up to this one. Um, when we look at this graph that they've already shown us, um, when you switch the x and the y, if you go over one, you go up one, um, that, that ordered pair is one, one. So when you switch it, it's going to look the same, one, one, right? Two, two is the next order pair right here. Well, when you switch that, it's still two, two. So this trans, when you, yes, we did do the inverse. This is the um, inverse of that, but it didn't switch anything because the ordered pairs are the same. Um, when you get to, you know, and they talk about how do you know if something is a function. Don't forget that you know that it's a um, function if it passes the vertical line test. Um, here's some ways that you can switch. Uh, to just use a graph. You can uh, rotate it 90 degrees and then reflect it. You have to reflect it across the horizontal. Um, if you rotate it counterclockwise, then you have to reflect it across the vertical axis. Horizontal axis is really um, going to be the x vertical is going to be the y. Um, so the, the resulting graph, now when, sometimes what they're going to be asking you is the when you do the inverse, when you switch the x and the y, is it still a function? Um, so we're going to look at that big time. Um, so if we look at this one, they took it and she's telling you how the different ways right here. You can read through that. She's like telling you the different ways that she got her answer. Um, but if you look at this, this thing passes the vertical line test. So the beginning function, uh, it, it is a function. But when she does the inverse, notice it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Uh, so when you inverse this, it is not a function. That's because uh, every now when you switch the x and the y, the x is, there's two different y's uh, for that graph. So what happens is when you look over here at the beginning, you can tell if the inverse is already going to be a function by doing what is called the horizontal line test. And when I do the horizontal line test, this graph fails. So I know when I do its inverse, it's not going to be a function. Uh, when it passes both the vertical and horizontal line test, it is called a one to one function because that means that it's going to pass both the vertical and line test. Every x has its own x has its own y and every y has its own x. None of them ever repeat. Uh, remember for for a function like right here this has um, every x has its own uh, y but every y doesn't have its own x. This y right here has two different x's. That's why this one is not a one to one function and when I do my inverse it does not turn into a function. All right, like I said, she's got that. Um, these are different ways that they uh, 
do these, and if you look, Cole did it the wrong way. If you re, uh, read this, um, he just, they talk about why he did it the wrong way. Um, but basically, I want you to know functions in, in, in the inverse of it. Again, um, if you look at this guy, um, when you switch, so we're going to make up some points right here. So let's just say that this point right here is uh, 2, 0. Well, when I switch my x and my y, it becomes 0, 2. And if you look, 0, 2, that would be that point right there, 0, 2. So it, the thing that we talked about with switching the x and y is that I think the best way to come up with the graph. But if you don't have it, the numbers, um, you can just kind of think of it situations like that. What I do is I like to make up kind of uh, examples uh, just like like this, like pretend that that's a 2, 0, then that means that I would go to 0, 2, and that shows me that, that this piece of the graph is right here. And then like this one, um, that looks like it would be, uh, you know, 5, 5. Well, then I go over here to 5, 5, and it's still uh, in that same same area, but now I know my graph is coming from this way, and it's going to go to that point. So that's why I know that it's going like that. Um, and then uh, I know that this portion is going straight across, so I know this is going to continue. And you can kind of piece that graph together like that. You can use these transformations where they talk about rotating and flipping it. I just like switching the X and the Y and thinking about it. And again, if you look at this, this horizontal guy, right, this guy is a function. It passes a vertical line test. But then I look at it again, and I draw horizontals. And it passes my horizontal line test, so I know when I do the inverse, it's still going to turn out to be a function. So this is a function. And so, again, this would be called a one-to-one -one function, because every x and y uh, has its own x or y. Again, they're showing you different ways. Uh, if you look at this... Uh, x to the fourth, um, it's not, doesn't pass the vertical line test, so that's not going to be a function. It passes the vertical line test, so that's going to be a function. Doesn't. So if you notice, all the evens are failing uh, because remember they have to end when we're doing them the uh, up, right? If this is x to the fourth, it's going to be uh, up up, which I know is not going to pass my horizontal line test. So when I do the inverse, switching the x and y it's not going to pass my vertical line test. So I know that the inverse function is, or inverse is not going to be a function. And when we can write it as a function, uh, we write it with this little negative one. So like if I was writing uh, this guy right here, this would be f of x equals x to the fifth. If I wanted the inverse, it would be f little, um, sorry, f negative 1, that stands for inverse, equals x to the, um, be the fifth root of x. All right, and we'll talk about that. Um, because what happens is, if I wanted to do this as an equation, so if I think about this, we, we've talk, talked about this before, the, this guy right here really says y equals uh, x to the fifth. When I do the inverse, we said you literally switch the x and y, so this becomes x equals y to the fifth. We don't like to have uh, y as our variable we're solving for, so we have to get y by itself, and it's got this fifth power. So how do you undo a fifth power? You take the fifth root. When you come over here and you do the fifth root, it becomes the fifth uh, root of x equals y. So that's how I got that inverse function. All right, so we talked about those main things. Um, so let's move on to 9-2. Pause it, get the... All right, so 9-2, we're going to definitely talk about square root function, cube root, uh, cube fun cube root function, uh, radical functions, and composites, um, composite functions. Uh, so here's what happens. Um, Alright, so in the previous lesson you learned that the inverse of a power function defined by a set of all x 
uh, y or f uh, x comma f of x is the set of all points y comma x. That's just the inverse. Um, so here's what happens to determine the inverse uh, power of the function x squared. So literally what you do, we are we just did this and we just talked about it. You switch um, the x and the y. That's what they did first. Notice it says now x equals uh, y squared. How do you undo square uh, squaring? You square root it. But when you put the square root sign in, we've talked about you must put a plus or minus sign. And so that's uh, where that came from. And why must the plus or minus symbol be written in front of the radical is because we're not allowed to have negative numbers underneath. Um, if you think about the square root, if I just said y equals the square root of x, um, I'm not allowed to put x is not allowed to equal negative 1 because it's not going to be a real number. It's going to be uh, imaginary, which we, we discussed. Um, so that's why it says right here, uh, so what, to combat that, we put the plus or minus sign outside here. And uh, so this cannot be written with this notation. You cannot have f of negative x because the inverse is not a function. How do I know the inverse is not a function? Because this is what my original graph looks like. When I do my horizontal line test, it's going to fail it. So I know when I do uh, the inverse of it, it's going to fail the vertical line test, which means it's not a function. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not a graph. It just means it's not a function. Uh, so yes, you can still graph that kind of graph, but it's not a function. Um, so again, here's a table that they're looking at. All right, so now... So now what they're trying to do is they're trying to show you that when you restrict that x, and you say when, when x is was greater than 0, um, so we can't have any negatives, um, it can be written as a function. And actually, it is uh, the square root of x, no plus or minus out there. Um, and so that, because of our, our restriction, um, allows us to write it as a function. Because if you look, whenever x was greater than 0, you've got this type of graph. And if I draw, it does pass my vertical line test because this, and I'm doing it as a dotted, this portion of the graph no longer uh, exists. Um, and that, uh, actually the reason for that is also, you notice this says f of negative 1, uh, so the inverse of f equals the square root of x. What they're telling you now is they're just... Uh, doing the square root of x. All right, so again, if you look at it here, they listed the ordered pairs, and all they did to get the function is they switched it. All they're trying to show you is x squared is very similar to the square root of x. Uh, they're just, you've just kind of switched. Um, this is what your graph looks like for this one. Well, it's like you've taken this graph, and you're going to get only half of it, and you're going to get this one side of it. There is another portion of it, but again, it gets knocked off because um, we're not going to be doing a plus or minus sign for it. All right. Um, notice right here. Um, negative 1, that is not, uh, uh, we're not going to do the inverse, uh, or the, we're not doing the notation where you flip it. Uh, it's not an exponent, is what they're trying to show you. This this right here is not an uh, exponent, it's the inverse. We'll practice more of this in class too, so if it's a little bit foggy in the beginning, it's okay. Tomorrow when you come in class and we do some skills practice, I'll start you off with some and then turn you free on them. Uh, so if you look at this key characteristics, they're talking about, hey, if you took the x, this is f of x equals x squared. If you took that function and you compared it to um, this function. And this one is restricted for x is only allowed to be greater than 
zero. So you're only talking about, um, so actually if I did that, um, this graph would look like this. My fault. This graph would only be this section. Why? Because we're only talking about where x is greater than or equal to zero. If you look at that, okay, and you look at this graph, again, it's like we switched um, the x and the y. Zero, zero, there's still zero, zero. Okay, let's go over um, one, up one. Well, over one, up one. That's still there. But now watch what happens. When I go over two and up four, I go, oh, uh, so this was um, two, four. Over here, it becomes four comma two. So one, two, three, four, and only up two. And so that you know, would be better if it's all like this. So it becomes like that. And if you look at your domain and your range, when you switch it, right, your domain will now become your range. Your range will now become your domain. But they were both the same anyways. Um, your your x-intercept would should become your y-intercept. Your y-intercept should become your x because you're, you're switching uh, all those. All right, now let's look what happens when we do. It's still going to be the same process. You're going to switch uh, the, the x and the y, but now we're doing, so x cubed, the inverse of that is going to be the cube root of x. Again, the way that I get that is I take y equals x cubed, switch the x and the y, Solve for y, so cube root this side, cube root this side, so you get y equals the cube root of x. Okay, if you look at this, you're seriously still going to switch the x and the y's. Uh, so um, when I have this guy, if I look at this, uh, sorry. Again, don't be afraid of X and Y charts. I think they are very good in helping us. If I'm making an X and a Y chart. If I put a negative 2 in here, negative 2 cubed is negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4 times a negative 2 is negative 8. Okay? If I put a negative 1 in, negative 1 kicks out a negative 1. If I put a 0 in, I get a 0 out. If I put a 1 in, I get a 1 out. If I put a 2 in, I get a positive 8 out. Now what this says is if you do cube root of x, what's what's going to happen? This says, hey, if you put a negative 8 in, okay, switch the x and the y, you should get a negative 2 out. And that's true. That the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. If you put a negative 1 in, you get a negative 1 out. If you put a 0 in, you get a 0 out. If you put a 1 in, you get a 1 out. If you put an 8 in, you get a 2 out. Again, look. They have switched the x and the y. Notice some of them they're trying to point out looks like it doesn't switch, but that's just because the x and the y are both the same. The x and the y are both the same, uh, but you are switching the x and the y. All right, and the reason we don't need the plus or minus symbol written in front of this guy is because um, when I look at my original one. Hopefully you remember from um, from uh, when we did x cubed, it looks like this. So when I switch my x and my y, so that's, I wish they would do these in different colors. I'm going to highlight this over here. This is the original x, that's x cubed. That is x cubed. This one is the inverse of it. Hopefully that makes it a little clearer. That's x, the cube root of x. And so if you look, my original, the, the red line, passes not only my vertical line test, it also passes my horizontal line test. And when, since it passes my horizontal line test, I know this guy is going to be a function. Whereas when I was up here and I was talking about the squared, um, when I was talking about the squared, my original, my x squared, 
and my square root of x, this had a plus or minus when I did the uh, inverse. So what happened was this looks like this. This means it looks like that. And so this guy passes vertical, so it's a function, but it doesn't pass the horizontal. So I know its inverse is not a function. That's why it doesn't pass my vertical line test. So what we did here is now what if we just do uh, x squared, but only when I talk about x being greater than or equal to 0. If I talk about that, then when I pop out the inverse, it becomes only the square root of x. Notice the plus or minus was dropped. And so what I have is I have this graph over here. When I graph the inverse of that, it turns out over here, this passes the vertical and the horizontal, which turns this into passing the vertical line test, and that means that this is a function. All right? Like I said, if it's a little foggy, you're going to have some practice on it tomorrow, so don't freak out. We'll go over some more of this in class. I just wanted to get this started and try to get us caught up. Uh, look at the key characteristics here. Um, notice, again, your domain becomes your range. Your range would become your domain, but they're still uh, the same because they end up uh, going to the same your domain is for is from there's no restrictions on the domain or on the, the range all right inverse by composite this is how you can check if those two are inverses of each other is if you uh, remember when you have a composite that means if I have f of g of x. I take and I put the x into the g function. I then take that whole g function and put it into the f function. So when they say, uh, right down here, when they say uh, g of x, that means that g of x um, is going to replace the x in my f function. So right here, this x squared is going to go in place for my x right there. And so that's why down here they got the square root of x squared. And what happens when you square root a square? They cancel out and you're left with just x. If they undo each other, then they are what is called inverses. That's why you can write them um, as a composite of these two. All right? Algebraically determine if the pair is inverses of each other. All right. Notice they did uh, both. To verify, they did um, h of q and then they did q of h. And both times, when you substitute it in, uh, it gets you back to uh, just x. And all it has to do is one of them has to fail. So they're asking here, determine if these guys are inverses. So again, when they say k of j of x, you are taking first and you are replacing all the x's in j with x. Well, if I look at that, all of my x's are already x's. But now here, when I go to do the k one, I'm going to take this whole function and turn it into my uh, k. So what it's going to really be is it's going to be k of 2x squared, negative 2x squared, minus 5. All of this is going to get plugged in for everywhere you see an x. So instead of writing 2x, it's going to be 2, negative 2x squared, minus 5, parentheses. Okay, this replaces the x right here, but that squared sign is still there, plus 5. Notice. All I did is I took that x out and I replaced it with this whole thing, this whole thing together. And that's what the book did too. All right. Then they broke it out because to square it, I have to multiply this times itself. They combine like terms, they distribute the two, and they get this. Okay. When I did that, notice this does not turn back into just x. So this is not, and an, these guys are not inverses of each other. If they were, it should equal x when I do this. All right, so here's some other examples that you can kind of read through, whether they're 
inverses or not. Like I said, tomorrow when we get to class, uh, we will do uh, more of this. So that should be good. Um, and I will talk to you more about 9.1 and 9.2 when you get to class tomorrow.